Uh, good evening, all you beautiful people of Lake Orion. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful fall day. My name is Ian Witherspoon. I'm your host, and I am Between Terminas. Between Terminas. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Come on, come on in. Come on in here. <laughs> All right, easy, easy, fella. All right, well, how you doing? Hanging in there. It's been a few weeks. Yeah. Haven't had the yeah. whole clan together yeah. in a while. Where have you been? Yeah, where have you been? You've been slacking. I've been busy. You've no, been you've been slacking. slacking. Hey, you moved that day out You've been huh? dancing with Coco yeah. Chris. What? Yes. What? You've been hanging around Coco. Yeah, right. You've been hanging around Coco. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, I'll be flat out with you. I'm. Uh, you might have been. All right. You might have been. I'd rather hang out with you two knuckleheads and Coco Crisp. Uh, Coco Crisp, a good guy for you. Good guy. Yeah. He's a loser. <laughs> he might be part of the biggest collapse ever. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see. Wouldn't that be nice? Funny, Seattle makes the playoffs in Kansas City. Hmm. Right now, wouldn't it be KC versus Oakland for the wild card game? Right now, yeah. That'd be interesting. That'd be yeah, scary. bullpen. KC would be smoked. Anyways, no. we're going to talk baseball in a bit. Mm -hmm. But the men want to come to the table and they want to talk football. Lions football. Why not? I he, he said Lions won? He said I your pack lost? I can't believe the Lions beat Green Bay. Why? Hit that panic meter. Yeah, what's the panic meter at? 50. Why? Because they won a game. And they went, well, they should not have won that game because they shut down Aaron Rodgers. And of course, let's hear. Your boy Steven Tug did a Bill Dramatica. And also, they don't, their corners, their second day was awful. And yet, how they still found a way to win this game, I have no idea. The Lions defense was fantastic, especially that defensive line. You got to give credit to that defensive line. Fairly and Sue. I mean, the Lions defense finally came out to play, especially those in the line. Yeah. You have to give them credit, and the Green Bay offensive line was overwhelmed. And as a result, Aaron Rodgers was limited offensively, and a lot of credit gives to give, you should give a lot of credit to the Lions defense for that. We're well, rarity on this show. And also, not to mention... Didn't Stafford have three interceptions? Two interceptions. Two. Two. Fumble lost. Mm. Right? Yeah, fumble, fumble lost, and he threw two picks. Yeah. <sighs> but, I mean, don't we expect to see the norm with, the, with Green Bay and Detroit? The Lions always beat the Packers at Ford Field, but the Lions always get smoked. Aaron Rodgers was 9 1 as a starter against the Lions. That only loss that they had before last night was he got concussed. Yeah. Yeah. Needless to say, Aaron Rodgers has had the Lions number, mm -hmm. right? He's had, he's had 68% completion percentage. I got to tell you, though, I don't uh, – the defense played well. Mm -hmm. The defense played well, but I got to wonder what the Packers were doing. Did they look – They. it was a weird game. They didn't look like they were trying to carve up that secondary too much. Well, because I don't know if he, Aaron Rodgers had enough time. You think they got to him? Yeah, they got to him. They hurried him. They pressured him. I mean, like, that's what happened here. I mean, like, I thought it, he well, couldn't I thought throw the field. I thought that we saw a different Dominican Sue. I thought when Dominican Sue tackled Aaron Rodgers, instead of roughing stomping him up him. and stomping on him, he offered his hand and he got him up. What an act of sportsmanship. Does that make up for all the other times of <laughs> Where's that? stomping? Sure it does. Taking out legs, sure kicking in the... It's good sportsmanship. Mm. Oh, no, it does not. Does he get paid for that instead of fined? Sure. You should get a, you should get a raise for that. Give him $10,000. He needs Yeah, the it. NFL needs to give him $10,000. They need to give him $10,000. The NFL's been so crazy the last few weeks, especially with what's going on with the, the sexual abuse. And domestic the, abuse. Domestic abuse. And then you've got, you know, Roger Goodell. The NFL should give D Duncan Sue a nice little, a nice little raise. You think that's going to happen? No. It should, but no. 
Okay. Um, so, what about Stafford, though? You, you touched on Stafford. Defense played. They did their job. Stafford, two touchdown, no, two, two picks, picks and a lost fumble. Well, is that least, concerning? Yeah, because you got to look at it here. Um, he looked way too much for Calvin Johnson. You know what I mean? One of those picks was – well, actually, if it wasn't for Stafford, the Lions don't get that safety. You think about it. Yeah, if he didn't throw an interception. At yeah, the one-yard line. At the one-yard line instead of, like, instead of having it at the 20-yard line. That was a huge difference in the game. Two points? Yeah, two points. They got a field goal out of the deal, the one that the only guy ever kicked. No, no, no. I'm just saying about during that – player the Lions end up getting the safety. Yeah, yeah, I know. But still, what if uh, that was a completion instead? Oh, if that was a completion, then, yeah, that would have been a touchdown. Maybe, but it could have set up for a touchdown. I'm just, uh, I'm a little concerned the past two weeks with Stafford. He did not look good. No. He didn't look good. He hasn't looked good the last two weeks. That's but what do saying. you want to go with the next other option, Dan Orlovsky? Dan Orlovsky's garbage. He needs to be gone. Bring in, bring in Kellen Moore. He'll be a quarterback, even with a lefty. Yeah. You know who's another lefty? Who? Shane Morrison. Yeah. Football. Look what, they yeah, look he's playing good, pathetic they? football over there at MU. Michigan, Michigan looks University. good. Michigan University looked really, really good. Who'd they lose yeah. to? They got beat by the 13th ranked team in the Pac-12, Utah. Jamaican bobsled team? Nope. Oh. At least Michigan State won. True. So they, Michigan State beat So much for not running up the score, huh? They had to run up the score. What? Why? They had to run it up. Why? The show they did not have to run up the score. They did not. Hmm. They did not have to run up the score. disappeared. Hmm. That's terrible. They hmm. ran. What would what would what would our what would our alumni brother and Derek Williams say about that? Sammy, explain yourself. He killed. Rob Biello would be would, would be he, okay, he but kill me. but Derek would kill you. Yeah. He, he would not be happy. Eastern Eastern. Down, though. They got a new coach, you know what I mean? I don't say kill, but he wouldn't be happy. They got a new coach, you know what I mean? So it's, it's tough over there in Eastern right now. Mike Hart's still over there? No. Hmm. No. Okay. Um, okay. Well, we know what happened. You expect that to happen. Yeah, but Michigan get losing. Big Ten going 12-1 and one on the day last week. Did they go 12-1? and one? Went 12-1. One. The one loss was Michigan. One loss was Michigan. Yeah, Indiana beat Missouri. Indiana sting Missouri. <laughs> Good God. In Missouri. Well, but, I mean, back to the Lions. I mean, they play whoa, the Jets Whoa, whoa, week. whoa, whoa. Easy. Don't yell at us. You haven't been on the show in three weeks. I think I have right to yell at you. Hey, Lions play the Jets this week. Lions play the Jets. Rex Ryan. Defense. Defense, I guess. Sure. Who do you got? Who do I got? Who do you think I got? You got Lions. Who yeah. do you got? I got Lions by like three touchdowns. I'm going to go with J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. By a field goal. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. By a field goal. What? What was that? <laughs> Jets by a field goal. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm going to be at that game. Have fun. And when they win by three touchdowns, you're gonna like me. I'm calling you. <laughs> okay. Have fun. I'm going to throw you in the... East River. You don't know where that is. Yeah, it's in New York. Somewhere over there. You don't I'm not going on a plane. You're not going on a plane? Nope. Why not? Because I'm afraid of planes. You're afraid of planes? Yes. We'll start driving. About ten hours. Yeah. All right. Well, when we come back, we're gonna have more spirited conversations about our beloved baseball team, the Detroit Tigers. Stay tuned. <laughs> Enjoy farm fresh produce, baked goods, art, and more at the 2014 Lake Orion Farmers Market sponsored by Crittenden Hospital. Walk, bike, or drive to the Orion Arts Center located at 115 South Anderson Street. Parents can purchase products grown and made locally while kids take part in fun activities like horseshoes and arts and crafts. Come early and come often as vendors change from week to week as new crops come into season. The Lake Orion Farmers Market is held every Wednesday from 2 to 7 p.m. through October 22nd. For more information or to sign up as a vendor, visit downtownlakeorion.org. Welcome back to Between Terminas, where we got a nice tight shot here of all of us. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the baseball team here. It was a good weekend for sports around here when you really think about it. Mm, Tigers, 
Tigers took care of business for the most part. They beat the they they took two out of three in mm-hmm. Kansas City, which it was a very big series. Tigers went in that series a half game up, came out of that series up a game and a half, pending mm-hmm. what happens between Kansas mm-hmm. City and mm-hmm. Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently trying to figure that out. Still four two right now. You yep, know what I mean? yep. Just started. Just yeah. started. Just underway. Mm-hmm. But you know, but Tigers, you know. They felt that back end of the bullpen. They seen them hot. They seen them Herrera in the seventh, Davis in the eighth, and um, Holland in the ninth. You know what I mean? That is probably the best bullpen the Tigers are going to see all season long. You know what the Royals felt? What back end of our bullpen, baby? One run, walk, hits. Saturday game. Joe Nathan survive another Joe Nathan scare. I got a question <laughs> for you guys. You go out and you trade for Joaquin Soria. Mm-hmm. And you don't use him? Mm, no. Can I ask why? 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 Because. Can you tell me the, ex- the reason? Because Dave Dombrowski's stupid. What? Because because he doesn't understand. Because Joe Nathan's blown seven blown saves, and also that um. Can you say what you just said again? <laughs> no. Can you say it again? <laughs> no, I. I yeah, louder. no. Okay. All right. Bottom line is is that. I can't What's believe he line? said that, but at the same, but bottom line is, Dave Dombrowski is a great owner. We're going with that. Great. General manager. A oh, great general manager. Sorry, but and anyway, and the point is, um, I, I guess he's having an, a lot enough confidence in Joe Nathan right now, that you know I think using Soria could be seen as a motivation thing for Nathan to okay if if you're not going to get the job done. We're going to get rid of you, and we're going to get Soria. Do we think this is going to come back to bite them at all? Oh, absolutely, because, like, you know. More than Joe, it already has? Yes, because Joe Nathan is starting to prove to himself that he's the next Todd Jones this team. Because um, when you look at um, when you look at the history of Tigers closers, you know what I mean? You had Todd Jones, you had Fernando Rodney, you had um, Joaquin Benoit, you had um, Jose okay, Valverde. 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 And, um, <laughs> Now you got Joe Nathan. Joe Nathan was supposed to be the final piece to bring the Tigers to the World Series. Mm-hmm. He has proven he's not. You got a guy. You got a guy like um, Joaquin Story in the bullpen. Use him. Can they win the? Can they win the World Series despite of Joe Nathan? No. 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 Why not? Because if you look at it here, they're going to run into another good team. You know what I mean? Like who has a. I mean, like the Tigers bullpen is very shaky as it starts because you know Phil Coke's not a good pitcher. Job is job is struggling. struggling. I mean, like, um, and he got Jim um, Johnson. Jim Johnson. He's struggling. Evan Reed. Evan Reed. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hang on now. Assuming the Tigers make the playoffs, unlike your prediction, Sanchez does he help out the bullpen? He's the closer. He's the closer. He's the closer. What about Soria? Soria? Yeah, I, I think Soria would be a good closer too. But I think Sanchez gives you. An option there in that um, bullpen, you know what I mean? Who knows? If we could convert a Sanchez is going to be a long reliever. If you look at it, if one of the Tigers starters is struggling, he's going to be a long re- reliever in the playoffs. But do I think the Tigers can win despite Joe Nason? Mm-hmm. Well, they've got a proven closer in Soria. <clears throat> yep. They've got a proven close and Jabba's closed some games. Ugh. Bill Coke has closed some games, Ugh. and you know. But I mean, I, they can. They, I think they can win. The problem's gonna be if you look at it. Baltimore is not gonna be the necessary problem because the Tigers, the ball, they're gonna enter that series. Baltimore is already down a man because of Chris Davis. But if you look at you look at Anaheim, the, we already know the Tigers have got Oakland's numbers, so I'm not too worried mm-hmm. about Oakland. Anaheim, I worry, because Anaheim does have that hitting, and Anaheim seems to have the Tigers' number, especially when the last few times that the Tigers have went to Anaheim. And it looks like that the, the series will start with An- at Anaheim if the Tigers and Angels Hey, meet. this is a lot of ifs, but I like your analysis. What's it going to take to get Joe Nathan out of the closer's role? Another blown save now, or is it going to take a blown save in the playoffs? Blown save in the playoffs. You don't. You think they're going to enter the playoffs? Joe Nathan as a closer. If they do get the playoffs, yes, Joe Nathan be their closer. Where's your panic meter at right now? Ten point seven trillion. May I ask why? 
<laughs> because, yeah, may I ask? because they got to play Chicago three times. They got to play Minnesota four times. Do you they see have... who they're? Did you see who's pitching against the Tigers tonight? <laughs> who? Mike Bigsby. <laughs> Hey, yeah, who is it? I don't know who it is. <laughs> Me and Sean, Sean Belegian. I don't know. Hey, Mike Bigsby, I think, is going to have a huge game against oh the Tigers. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mike Bigsby. <laughs> Yeah. He's gonna have a huge game. Evil, <laughs> if he is that panic button meter. Oh yeah, here comes Mike Bigsby <laughs> trotting out of the bullpen. Mike Bigsby. <laughs> oh, yeah. What in the world is going on? I here? don't know. I don't know. If he strikes out six times and goes six oh, innings, gets a no run, then he should be ashamed of you. I hear he pitches <laughs> underhand. <laughs> yeah. Monet Davis is closing for him, too. What? Yeah, look out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, yeah, yeah. What are you scared what about the White Sox, man? The White Sox. They're out of it. Because they got some good hitting in the outfield. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. The White Sox got nothing to lose. I get that. And also, they got the Minnesota Twins, which remember they took two or three from the Tigers in Minneapolis. That's and, of me. course, they gave the Tigers problems. You said it yourself. They have. <laughs> they can hit the ball. But they're coming home. It's a stretch run. They got to win. I, I, I think the Tigers are going to take care of business. Hit the panic mod beer, please. Okay. Uh, we'll see you next week yeah. when they're in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, yeah, we'll we're going to update you on the Kansas City Royals game with the Indians. And we're going to talk a little Dragon football. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello, I'm Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. And I'm former Detroit Red Wing Joe Coaster. We'd like to remind you to practice safe boating by knowing the laws regarding water safety. Please make sure you have the necessary safety equipment on board and be sure all of your equipment is working properly before leaving the dock. And the probability of being involved in a boating accident nearly doubles when alcohol is involved. Always check local weather conditions and if you notice darkening clouds, play it safe. Get off the water. Have a safe, enjoyable summer on the lake. Hey, this is not Anthony, this is Ian. Welcome back to Between Terminas, oh, where, uh, yeah, where we're just waiting on technology here. Anyways, there was a Dragon football game over the weekend. Sammy, I know how you feel. Sam? This is real tears. Well, you're really, you're really, you're really all over the place, from hysterics to the other end of hysterics. Well, I mean, let me share what happened. Um, Lake Orion lost a tough one on um, Friday to Oxford, and in losing, they also lost the Double O Trophy back to Oxford. Gone. And usually, when Lake Orion wins, um, we would have the Double O Trophy come on there. Our show, but Correct. in this case, um, not no such luck. It's at least for this year. It's not not it's here. Not here. <sighs> um, hopefully next year um, things will be different. We'll have the double O trophy back on here. But um, here's the reality. Um, the reality of it is is that the um, the reality of it is is right now the Dragons are two and two. Yeah. Then these are those were and the the two games they lost they could have won. Yeah. And right I mean, now this kid's running half marathons every game. What's going on here? Kraus. At Big Matt Kraus. Kraus. Matt, Big Matt Kraus. Matt Kraus is doing what he can. Yeah. And I mean a yeah. lot of it is, you know, they're making some unfortunate mistakes. Um this okay. team's one dimensional when you look at it. This team is one dimensional. They rely on the run a lot. Yeah. Um true. You know, they, they don't have a true wide receiver to the outside. You know, they had a touchdown last week from Cottage to Fox, but mm -hmm. until this team develops a true wide receiver, how can they go places? And that defense is not very good. As I mentioned on my podcast, I said, when I look at this team, especially in the linebacking position, this is not the same team. When you look at, especially at the linebacking spot, this is where they've been getting killed, and also the injury to Duke Casey has not helped this team this season. But I look at, too... The Dragons are in this uh, familiar. You remember your junior, our junior year, correct? You know the the Dragons were two and two then. Right. How did they respond? <laughs> they went six and three and made the playoffs. Now in two thousand seven, the Dragons were two and were two 
and two then as well. They went six and three under different circumstances. They ended up going to the regional final, um, regional final. Do you think, can you see this on the horizon for the Dragons? Do you see a repeat performance? I'm going to ask you no. Because Why? Of, here, because like, I don't, this, the senior class has not proven they can win anything. Because you got to look at. I what, disagree, but what, go You got to look at what, what that this um, schedule. You know, the schedule, you got West Bloomfield, who's a very good opponent, Sony Creek next week, you got to play Clarkston week eight, and you got the Crosshair week nine. You can see at least two of those ma games maybe being losses, but also you can see maybe two wins there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But um, when you look at this class has got to prove to me that they can win a big game. It's all metal, especially new. And look at when they play Clarkson. It's all metal. That's the problem that, the, that this group has. It's all metal. You know what I mean? And then you got to look at them, um, you know, but do I think they can compete with Clarkson? Absolutely. But but th with this week's point, West Bluefield, you know, let's move as athletic as hell. They play a very good, they, they're a very, they're a spread team, they're a jet team. I mean, like, they're going to spread you out. Of course, they got a very good quarterback, Trisha Jackson. They got a good mm -hmm. running back, Chess receiver, Michael King. Of course, they got a very good, um, very good lineman, Eddie Wilson. You know, their defense is not bad. And you got Obi Jackson at linebacker. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, this is going to be a very tough match for the Dragons, especially um, on their homecoming. And it's, it's possible they could lose their first homecoming game since 2000. Talk to me about the play of the quarterback. Well, what, what thoughts on that? Cameron's doing everything he can. Cameron Kosich is doing everything he can. I know a lot of people are bashing the one-year quarterback system, but if you look at it, Cameron Kosich has been in the program for a long, long time. I have no problem with Cameron being our quarterback. He should have been the starter last year, being honest with you. No offense to Connor. No offense to Connor Grant, but he should have been the starter last year because this was a team that really needed a defense, especially Connor Maybe. Grant at defense. You know, if he didn't play quarterback in the Stony Creek game, you know, then this, the injury to Kosick would not have happened and would have had a different result. But, I mean, you look at, but obviously history is history. That's in the past. But, you know, Cameron's, all Cameron's doing is just running the offense, which if you look at the offense, it's, you know, Matt Krause and Matt Krause, Matt Krause. But you've got to give credit to the offensive got line Zach as well. Serzo. Yep, you got Zach Serzo, you got Keith Fields, you got guys that can also run the ball. But, I mean, you are right that the Dragons are a bit one-dimensional. They, they are one-dimensional. That they don't, use their, they don't use the wide receivers as much as they do. Um, I think that's got to change. They got to be a little more dynamic on offense. And also, I think, but I do think that this group is going to fix it. I really think we've not seen the Dragons' best game. And I think because the backs are in the wall, I think the next few weeks you're going to see the Dragons play their A game. And I think that, you know, and if you look at it, if the Dragons play their A game, they're going to beat any, they're going to beat anyone. They can beat Clarkston. I feel, I, I can, I feel that they can beat Clarkston. I can feel that they can run the table and go into, and make the playoffs. A lot of people are saying that you know that we're not that Lake Orion's not going to make playoffs. I don't buy that. I think Lake Orion will make the playoffs, and I think the Lake Orion's going to come in very strong. I I really feel that Lake Orion. We haven't seen the best Lake Orion team yet. I really think that what happened with Oxford, what happened with Chippewa Valley, I think it's going to motivate the Dragons. And also, I think going forward, they know what's at stake. It's a must-win game. Every game here on out is a must-win game for the Dragons. Talk to me about the two opponents they lost to. Chippewa Valley is good. Well, Chippewa Valley, I'm surprised they're one and two. I mean, they're, they're two and two, two. Um, because they lost Sterling Heights Stevenson a really bad game. I mean, they're not they're a decent team. They're okay. They're not great. But then they beat them. Um, they lost them Macomb, Dakota, who was a very was good, good team. Perennially, perennial, perennial power. Perennial and then, power. Of course, um, Oxford, of course, they're unbeaten right now. They're four and all. They got Clarkson this week. Hmm. So Oxford is not the old Oxford. Well, they're I mean, senior late they're in this senior year. late in this year, but I, like I mean, it. you know, Oxford does have a decent defense. Um, you know, they've. But if you can't score six times, if you can't convert six a lot times. Of, a lot of the mistakes have been the Dragons' own mistakes. Self-inflicted wounds, huh? Yeah, it's been kind. Of, yeah, I mean, you, you mean you had six opportunities to score there, and you have to take advantage of those opportunities. And six times in the red zone came out twice. It was very, it's difficult, and. Um, you know, two times at the one yard line, and it's, hey, it's difficult. The reality of it is, the Dragons are two and two, but I mean, it's what it is. What it is, you got a very 
big game on Friday against West Bloomfield, and we're going to see how it goes, and then going in the rest of the season. All right. Fair enough. Thoughts on uh, Friday? You know, I said this in my, blog, in my podcast. I said, um, you know, I was very, very tense when it comes to this game. Um, but what I said in my podcast is I'm going to say, I said Lake Oran would win this game 63-56. Offensive I am not sold on this defense. This defense, I call last year's defense the worst defense I've seen. This is the worst defense I have seen in Lake Orion history this year. My God. I think that that's not, I, they're very young defensively. You but can't I mean, say you're young anymore. This is not an excuse. This is not an excuse um, because the young part is over. It's time to play. I, I'm going to say this that, defense is not I'm going to say that the, the, um, I think Lake Orion wins over West Bloomfield. Um, it's going to be a war, no doubt about it. Um, I, it the, it's, they're at home, homecoming. Um, they got to put all think, the homecoming crap away this year. I don't think I, I, West Bloomfield is better, but, I mean, at the same time, they still do struggle with discipline. They still do. I mean, this is the, West Bloomfield's better. They're athletically better. Um, they're, but they, they're, there's, they have threats everywhere. But at the same time, when it comes to discipline, you know, West Bloomfield's question is discipline, and can they handle the type of discipline? I think Lake Orion's going to get West Bloomfield based on, you know, Lake Orion plays fundamental, a little more fundamental football. West Bloomfield's more about finesse. Lake Orion's about the physical grit and tough, tough approach. I think Lake Orion is going to win. It's going to be a high-scoring affair because I think when West you look Bloomfield at does average Lake 40 Orion, points a game. But Lake Orion, Lake I Orion mean, like is. when you look at Lake Orion's defense, they're much maligned. I think when you look at this game, I think Lake Orion's defense has been improving. It's going to be slowly but surely. <laughs> we're, um, we're, I still think it's going to be a 63-56 game. I think Lake Orion's going to find a way to get in the end zone. Don't underestimate Lake Orion's defense. We'll They'll see how it goes. find a way to get in the end zone. We'll see how it goes. Well, we just got a breaking news update. Breaking news update is that the Royals <laughs> lost. So going into the game today, Tigers are up two. Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. They lost 4 3, didn't they? <clears throat> they did score a run. They All did. right. So Tigers are up two games. Tigers win tonight. Royals lose tonight. We have three. three games. Mm -hmm. Either way, Tigers still lead the division. Right. It's a win win for the Tigers for now. Yep. But I'd rather be, have them up three than, than up one. We'll see you later tonight. Mm -hmm. We'll Maybe see what see. happens. Mm -hmm. Go Indians. I can't believe Ian's rooting for Cleveland. I'm rooting for Cleveland right now. I can't believe you're rooting for, for Cleveland. For three more days. And then who does Cleveland play to close the year? Kansas City? No, Kansas City, sorry. They play Chicago. Okay. That's then you're rooting for Chicago. Right? I'm not sure. Yeah, it is because okay. Kansas City's done with home games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least they won their last home game of the year. That's nice. Yeah, but I don't think they'll win anymore. They'll win another game. Home games? They're done with those. Seems like it'd be impossible, yeah. Any final thoughts? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Hockey season starts tonight. Preseason. My Stars play tonight against the Blues. Oh, really? Yes. They're going to beat the Blues. I'm oh, very wow. curious to see how Jason Spessa, Alex Hemsky play on the second line alongside Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn. I wish I could say I was eager for that, but... Well, I mean, hockey say. season does start up tonight. Um, I'm very, very curious to see how the um, how the Avalanche do this year, especially with how um, the changes, and it's going to be very, very interesting. Patrick Waugh is now starting a goal, right? No. Player coach? He's the best coach of the year. Okay. No. The well, wings are done. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Hope you're entertained. Hope you enjoy your week. We have a surprise for you all next week. Go Detroit. Go Dell.